So that's where we left off last time. And if you haven't seen last time, yeah, card link. So we left off with a very fast flickering display intentionally switching it on and off as fast as the Arduino can to generate some stress on the five volt rail. And in result, we have a very, very noisy five volt rail. And today I'm even measuring a little bit more noise. Uh, yeah, maximum 5.14, minimum 4.20 makes 940 millivolts peak to peak. Uh, abhorrent. Uh, anyway, unlike last time, I have now some real low ISR capacitors. And if all else fails, I have uh, some inductors here too. Anyway, before we go into decoupling the power rail of that thing, um, I want to prove to you once and for all that this is not I squared C. Hold on to your hats. So last time I stated that they just added these two pull up resistors to the data line and the clock line. Yeah, to ensure some compatibility with I squared C in case anybody tries to use that actually on an I squared C bus, which we learned is not a good idea. So I will remove these pull ups now. So no more pull ups. And as you can see, the device is still flickering happily away as it should. And yeah, if you don't believe me, that's really the board. Come on, without the pull-ups. Okay, with that out of the way, let's go on to filtering our power rail. And with just that low ESR capacitor placed on the breadboard, uh, yeah, can you see that down here on the breadboard? Uh, we are, uh, and I moved it and uh, yeah, <clears throat> that changed things. So I'm a little bit off here now with my cursors. Uh, but before I moved it, I was at a minimum of 4.5 volts and a maximum of 5.04 volts makes a peak of 500, peak to peak of 540 millivolts. Anyway, uh, that was about uh, or even 20 millivolts better than last time where we used uh, two 470 microfarad electrolytics in parallel. Anyway, I think we can do better. Before there was a cheap 100 nanofarad capacitor here and I replaced that now, yeah, cobbled together more like, uh, with that low ESR 470 microfarad and a brand name 100 nanofarad capacitor. Let's see how this is doing. Of course, <laughs> I have now something uh, below the board here standing out, so I need a stand off here, which I cobbled together. So yeah, anyway, uh, just yeah, removing that capacitor over here nearer to the chip shaved off another 40 millivolts here. So our yeah, minimum is now 4.5 volt it didn't change, but our maximum is now at five volts down 40 millivolts. And just to show you where we are without display, yeah, with our noise level on the five volt rail from uh, just my cheapo power bank here. So minimum 4.76 volts, maximum 4.98 volts. That is peak to peak 220 millivolts. So uh, that would be our ideal goal. But uh, yeah, we are still at 500 millivolts peak to peak noise. Mm, we have to do a little bit more. And now my power bank switched off because there's not enough load. So here's just for comparison, one of the modules in its original state. And yeah, first we removed these pull up resistors. Then I replaced that 100 nano capacitor by 
470 micro low ESR plus a 100 nano. And we have still that reverse polarity protection diode here left on the VCC line coming in. And I replaced that by an inductor. Uh, 22 micro Henry's, uh, that's not even a guesstimate. That's what I could get uh, cheaply and could fit in here size wise. Okay, but it's in the right order of magnitude. So usually in that power range, um, yeah, a few hundred milliwatts you will find inductors between a few microhenries and a few 10 microhenries. Okay, so let's try that. Interestingly, the inductor made things worse. So I'm now at uh, 4.36 volts to 5.04 volts back to 680 millivolts peak to peak. Makes me wonder if that cheap power brick here has hmm, a problem. Let me search for another power source. With another even, yeah, maybe <laughs> cheaper power bank, uh, I'm down to 620 millivolts peak to peak. Yeah, top line 4.9 volts, bottom line 4.28 volts. Yeah, just as a sanity check, I switched to my notebook as power supply. Yeah, no display connected. And we are now here at a peak to peak noise of 160 millivolts on the power rail. Please always keep a note the 5 volt regulator on the Nano is not involved if you power that thing by USB. So yeah, it's all the quality of your USB power source. Anyway, maximum 4.84, minimum 4.68 volts. So now with display. But the noise won't stop. So uh, 680 millivolts peak to peak. And yeah, maximum 4.96, minimum 4.28 volts. Uh, just as a sanity check, let me put in uh, one of the original modules. Okay, <laughs> this is one of those cases uh, where you might have a problem with a single board because that board here, that module, produces yeah, with a notebook as power source without any modification just the noise of 440 millivolts peak to peak, maximum at 4.9 volts, minimum at 4.46 volts. Hmm. So let me desolder these pull-up resistors again. I mean, we know that we don't need them uh, for yeah, data communication, but maybe they uh, serve some nefarious purpose. Uh, second. And no, the pull-ups didn't uh, serve any nefarious purpose. Uh, the noise is still the same, maybe even uh, a wee bit lower, but uh, I don't care about that. And yeah, <clears throat> this is really with the pull-up resistors removed. So uh, I will just botch in now a 470 micro low ESR here. Uh, yeah. And with that uh, 470 micro ESR capacitor botched in, we are now at 360 millivolts peak to peak noise. We are getting somewhere. Uh, yeah, maximum 4.84, minimum 4.4. 8 volts. Uh, let me short out the diode. And yes, uh, it's really just botched in. And with the diode shorted out, we have more noise. Our mo mo noise uh, peak to peak went up from 360 millivolts and it's now at 420 millivolts. Huh. 
So 4.84 top, 4.42 bottom. Ah, so the diode is suppressing noise for some reason. Uh, and yes, I really shorted out the diode. Huh. Just as a sanity check, I <laughs> took the first module I modified and put in the diode again. And <laughs> our noise here is also down to 360 millivolts on the power rail. Huh. I, I really don't know uh, what to think about it, but um, I guess we uh, leave it at that and um, yeah, we can move on to the conclusions. We did a whole lot of experiments. Okay, this was the noise I measured last time. Yeah, there was already a card and there's a link in the description before. And we started off, uh, yeah, with basically 940 millivolts noise. And we were able to suppress that just with a low ESR 470 microfarad capacitor on the module to 500 millivolts. And from there things got worse. Okay, so removing that uh, diode on the VCC pin of the module and replacing it by a 22 microhenry inductor uh, increased the noise. Okay, then I uh, changed the power bank and uh, yeah, that was a little better power bank, still a cheapo, 620 millivolts. Then I went uh, to my notebook, yeah, without a display, 160 millivolts noise on the power rail. Then I connected that module again and uh, yeah, the modified one with inductivity and 470 microfarad and I ended up at 680 millivolts. I connected an original module that yielded 440 millivolts on the notebook power supply. Yeah, we should also try that with the uh, cheapo power, power bank I used at the start. And we noticed that shorting out the diode, yeah, increases the noise on the power rail again. So basically the solution is really just to add a 470 microfarad low ESR capacitor. Or oh, when we have a look at <laughs> the data sheet again, um, yeah, uh, y y you can scrap these pull-up resistors. Yeah, I showed that in the very beginning. Uh, you only need them if you really want to try to run that TM1650 on an I squared C bus, which is not a good idea. And uh, yeah, all I did was the recommend uh, to add the recommended 470 microfarad capacitor here. Of course, low ESR. And very important, I leave the diode in. Yeah. Okay. Now let's see what happens uh, if we uh, connect multiple displays. <laughs> I connected four displays here, a uh, notebook as power supply and uh, yeah, I'm no longer running the worst case here, but uh, yeah, typical application, just displaying numbers, changing them from time to time, uh, every 250 milliseconds to be exact. And the noise on my 5 volt rail is absolutely acceptable, 280 millivolts. Though the rail drooped 
quite a bit. So yeah, at the top I am at 4.44, at the bottom at 4.16 volt. Um, rod of warning. <laughs> Don't try that with an Arduino Nano version 3 when you are using the 5 volt regulator on the board. You can only do that if you, uh, yeah, if you uh, cut the regulator on the board out of the loop. It's a linear type regulator. It will probably cook up because we are probably drawing a little less than 400 milliamps here on the 5 volt rail with 4 displays. Um, yeah, but the drooping, yeah, all the connection here, thin wire connection on the breadboard and a cheapo USB cable and uh, yeah, whatnot. Uh, I hope this will go away in the final product. Anyway, I said we should compare the noise now with a relatively stable USB power supply. Uh, compared to when we are using a cheapo power bank. And that's exactly what I will be doing now. Let's power that on and... Yeah, we have maybe, maybe a little bit more noise. There's sometimes spikes going up. But it's also uh, quite acceptable now. So my best guess is, yeah, maybe 320 millivolts. Yeah, instead of the, what was it, 260. Uh, my guess is that we were really uh, stressing the voltage regulator here. So this must be a boost converter circuit in here with this quick changing current demands and yeah anyway i'm happy running four displays on an arduino nano and yeah noise level on the five volt rail in acceptable levels that's all i ever wanted in my life bye